This video is about how to save a pot where the glaze ran. Basically, the glaze on these pots was a little bit thick, which meant that it ran. Every single one of these mugs was stuck to a kiln cookie. Every single one. Luckily, I used wadding and kiln cookies when firing these mini mugs. The kiln cookies and the wadding were literally a lifesaver. Not only did they save my kiln shelves, but also meant I was able to save all of these mugs. You can still use this method if you didn't use cookies and wadding, but it's a bit more tricky and you may end up with damaged kiln shelves. If you want to know all about wadding and kiln cookies and a really simple way to make your own, join my pottery club. You'll get instant access to these tutorials and many others. The link is below this video. Today, I'm showing you how to do this with my dolly mugs, but this method works for all sized pots, not just teeny ones. Before we get stuck in, can you just take a second to like this video and subscribe to my channel? This means I can make more helpful videos just like this one. Back to the pots. Okay, firstly, you're going to need to separate the pot from most of the kiln cookie. You'll need a few tools to do this. I use a wallpaper scraper and a flathead screwdriver. You'll also want to wear gloves as the shards can be quite sharp. Eye protection is also a very good idea in case any of the small bits fly off. Because I put wadding in between the kiln cookies and the mug, there is a small gap which I can get my wallpaper scraper into easily. This gives me extra leverage from which I can snap off the kiln cookie. Some of the kiln cookies are a little bit thick, so I needed a bit more oomph to ply them off. In those cases, I used the screwdriver, as it wasn't as flexible as the wallpaper scraper. Sometimes, you might just be able to snap the kiln cookies off using your gloved hands. Be careful. Kiln cookies are designed to be sacrificial. They die so your mug and kiln shelves can survive another day. I'll need to make some more after this. Remember, I teach you how to make kiln cookies over in Pottery Club. Once I got most of the kiln cookies off my mugs, I moved over to my wheel. Now we're going to use a diamond sanding pad to sand off the remaining glaze drips and smooth the bases of the mugs. These are quite expensive, but the amount of pots I've saved over the years, they've paid for themselves three times over. They come with a sticky pad on the back so you can stick them to a bat. I use the bat in my Lotus wheel head, but you can just attach the bat to your wheel as you would normally. We're going to pour water onto the diamond pad before sanding each pot. You also want to dip the bottom of the pot into the water before you start. Water does two important things. It captures all that nasty dust and it prevents the pot from getting hot from the friction. Hold the pot firmly in both hands to avoid it flying off. You don't need to apply a lot of pressure, just the weight of your hands and the pot are sufficient. I hold my pot at about four o'clock on the wheel head. The wheel should be spinning fast or full speed. Hold the pot for five seconds, then check the base. Keep checking to see how you're doing. Dip the pot in water every time you check and you'll need to reapply the water to the diamond sanding pad itself intermittently. Don't be alarmed, the grinding noise is quite loud. I've lowered the sound on this video, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear me speaking. If you put your maker's mark on the base, you might lose it from the sanding, but that's better than losing the entire pot. Sometimes you're lucky and the stamp is on the opposite side to the drip. I know kiln cookies are an extra step in the making process, but they really are worth the time investment. Even if you use kiln wash, major glaze drips will stick a pot to the kiln shelf. Kiln shelves are made of harder material than kiln cookies and will pull chunks of your pot away, whereas kiln cookies are designed to break up. Trust me on the kiln cookies. With a little patience, you'll be able to sand away all the glaze from the base which shouldn't be there. I use this method to save all 30 of these little mugs. I hope this video was helpful and helped you save some of your pots. 
don't forget to check out my Pottery Club, where as well as loads of tutorials like this one, you get personal help from me with all your pottery dilemmas. Thank you so much for watching. See you again.